Hello friends and welcome back to my crafty space. In today's video, I am going to be putting together a project using the Paper Person Made From Scratch collection. Now yesterday I did my project planning video where I put together a whole bunch of different stories I can tell. And today I am going to focus on the story about our craft beer hall of fame. I couldn't pass up the chance to go ahead and do this one and to film it and show you guys the whole process. So what I have on on the table here in front of me is the stamp set, the local brew stamp set, which I'm going to use to create some kind of embellishment cluster on this card just so I can use the stamp because I really want to use the stamp. So that is going to be that. I did go ahead and add some journaling to my card here through my printer. So I created a canvas inside of Photoshop and then put the lines in there, ran it through my printer, and then that gave me this. One thing I will do for you guys in case you also have this collection. Now, it will depend because... Um, the, the portion of this paper I used has the larger section up here at the top. So I cut it from the top to the four inch mark and then sectioned it into three. So this would have been the back side of one of the cut apart sheets. What I will do is go ahead and add my template to this post. So if you guys have a card that looks like this that you wanna add journaling to, then you can just fill it in with your own journaling in Photoshop and print it out on your card. Uh, because I know that it's a little tedious to try and figure out the exact measurements to get to everything on this card. So just in case you're using the same section of this paper, I'll add that on there for you guys um, if you want to use it. If you don't, you know, it is what it is. So I did go ahead. I put my journaling on here. That's going to be a little three by eight section. And then we have the main part of my spread. So I have this green leafy paper, which the back side is this kind of diagonal line. I'm thinking about adding a strip of it up at the top. I printed off pictures of the six beers that we have brewed here in our home over the course of the last year. So I've got all six of them that I will cut apart. And then I'm thinking of using these labels, which I originally had in a different story packet, but then I liked that I had five of them and I found one more that has a similar tone from an older like an older set. I just cut it out and stuck it in with these ones. Oops, sorry about that shaky camera. And uh, that gave me six. So I can add the names that we have given them and put those right next to the beers. And then I've got one more that can go on the top to be part of my title. So that's kind of where I'm starting from. I also have pulled out some different inks that I can use. And then this little guy here, uh, if you are into craft beer, or I believe there's one for wine as well, um, and among lots of other categories, like there's a baby one and there's a travel one and a bird one, all kinds of these. These are called passports that are from Letter Folk. So inside of this book, it's like a little traveler's notebook, but this one is all about craft beer. So you can put in the beer name, the brewery, the type of beer, the location of where the brewery was at, um, the ABV level, the IBU level, which is all like terminology for craft beer stuff, flavor and appearance, who you drank it with, uh, the color of it, description in five words or less, your rating, and then, you know, whatever else you want to add note-wise. So I got this little passport for my husband for his birthday, I think it was, or it could have been Father's Day for something I got it for him. I think they're like 10 bucks for one of these. And, um, he fills it out with each new beer that they make. So that way they have notes on all of the different ones inside of this book. Um, and then eventually when it gets filled up, we'll just get another one. So it's super cool, this little book. I actually have the other one that I got of these. It's this one, which is totally not related to this. I also got this baby one from the same company. And this one inside has uh, one page for each month. So like four months, five months, six months. And then it has all these little sections to fill out each month to document how your child is changing, growing, changing, all of that. And then there's, you know, I think it goes all the way up to 24 months. And then um, there are notes on like teeth and 
food and doctor's visits and all of that kind of stuff in here. So it's really, really fun. This is what I use to help me keep notes on my niece as she is growing. I haven't actually filled it out, but I do have the stuff somewhere for me to fill this out. But this is where I got my general questions from that I ask my uh, in-laws every month to answer the questions on. So these are super cool. Letter Folk is the name of the company and these are their passport series. I'll make sure to add a link to this. So if you guys are interested in learning any more about it, you can find it there. So what we'll do now, I'm going to put you on fast forward. I'm going to work through getting this spread all put together. I'm really excited about this. And then once we have it done, we'll slow back down and close out. So let's dive right in. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do to get started with this spread is to take that stamp set and go ahead and make all of the embellishments with it that I want using some matte white sticker paper. I like to have a little bit of this on hand because when I'm working with stamps like this one where I can go ahead and put the uh, little icon onto the paper, then all I have to do is trim it out and it's a sticker just waiting to be stuck down on the page. So for this one, I picked a couple of different icons that I liked. I have the, um, I can't even think of what it's called right now. Not the keg. It'll come to me. Um, the tap. I have the tap there, where is it, which is what they pull on in order for the beer to come out when you go to the brewery. I've got the carboy there, which is, or the fermenter, which is where, um, you know, the beer goes to ferment and do its thing. Then I've got the cup there for the beer to go into. And I'm also going to pull off the beer bottle and stamp two of those. With this, I'm using my scrapbook.com premium black dye ink. It is my favorite black ink by far. Um, I've tried a lot of different ones, and it's not that I don't like the other ones. I just typically come back to the scrapbook.com one. I like how bold it is, so, you know, I'm just going to use it. And then I went ahead and grabbed a couple of different colors. These ones are the Allie Edwards stamps. I like the color of them. I felt like they would go nicely with the colors of this kit. So I have this one. It's green and called Willamette. Uh, that is what I stamped inside of the fermenter there, which just kind of shows where the hops are. And then I also pulled out the Honeyman stamp, or not stamp, the Honeyman ink in order to stamp the beer into the glass. It has like that nice kind of amber look to it. So I felt like that was a really good match for uh, making a glass of beer. Then I just have to go ahead and get these guys all fussy cut out. I am not going to make you watch me do all of that, but I am going to go ahead and cut all of those out here in a little bit. Uh, before I do that, I want to take my photos that I have here. I took the six photos of the beers that we have created. They are on a four by six canvas. I do that inside of Photoshop. That's just my preferred editing program but I know you can also do that in some different apps and whatnot that help you create collages. So mine are two by two photos. They're actually a little bit shy of two by two because I want them to have that white border around them. I like how that looks, especially when I'm working on a page like this where they're going onto a, a patterned background. It's really gonna help those photos pop off of the background. Then I went and took all of those label stickers and I trimmed them out because I want to make sure that they're going to fit on this page. And that's really the reason I did that. I know I want to have three and three. And as I'm looking at this, I'm really starting to question if this is going to fit on the page I the way I want it to. I ultimately decide like, you know what, whatever, if, if the outside ones go off of the page, then it'll be okay. Like it's not the end of the world. So I'm just going to go ahead and let that be. Then I took that patterned top piece and I cut it down to about an inch and a half, I believe. Yeah, it's an inch and a half. And I'm adding that to the top. That's where I'm going to put my title piece, which will be this label here. It's a little bit larger than the ones down below. And I will add the title Hall of Fame into the middle of it. Uh, which I might do here in just a second. Then what I'm going to do is figure out where I'm going to place these stamped icons. I really like the uh, carboy, the fermenter, whatever that piece of equipment is. It's one of those. It might even actually be both of those. We have a home brewing system, so we don't have all the super fancy equipment like that. Uh, we do have a carboy, but it's... Um, just like a glass container. And the fermenter is basically the same thing. You just, you know, you have to 
move it around to different to different ones in order to do you know primary and secondary fermentation and, and all that all that fun stuff. So our equipment does not look that fancy as it is right here. Uh, and then I did go ahead and take the uh, the tap and the beer inside the glass and I'm thinking that will be cute on one side of the label and then putting the beer bottles on the opposite side. This is where I just went ahead and fussy cut it all out so that you guys didn't have to watch me do that. It looks super cute this way. However, I don't like that this stamp is not popping off of the grid paper. So I'm thinking I might go ahead and take one of those larger labels, one of the super big ones, put it into the middle of the card and then add the die cut on top of that. Then I went into my stash and I grabbed some of my puffy alphabet stickers. These are some older Feature Craft ones. They are black and I want to say they came in one of their older kits like from a long time ago. I did look them up to see if they still have any and they don't which is a bummer because they are really nice and thin which makes them perfect for making titles like this one because I needed to add a lot of letters into this label and they all fit. Like how many is that? Hall is four, fame is four, so eight. There's 10. There's 10 letters in there and they fit just fine. I will go ahead, take my tweezers and readjust them here in a little bit um, to make everything a little bit more readable. But first I need to take everything off of here so I can start getting everything adhered down. When I do that, I am going to realize that I made a giant mistake. Uh, when I trimmed out this paper during my planning process, I accidentally trimmed the paper too short. So it, it takes me a few minutes to figure out what I'm going to do about that. I debated trimming it down to a uh, six by eight instead of whatever size it was here. Um, but you guys will, you know, you'll see my solution here when we get to that. For this journaling card that I'm just making into a decorative card, I added the blue label sticker into the middle of the grid. Then I added the icon on top of that or the, the die cut right there. And then I felt like it needed something a little bit more. So I took the stamp that has the at symbol. So it said at the brewery. And I literally just cut off the brewery and use that on its own to create my title. That I have no problem cutting apart my stamps. You can still like squish them back together and use them as a full stamp. It does not ruin them. Uh, it just allows me to be able to use one sentiment at a time. Like I don't I didn't want the at sign, so I just cut it off of there. And now the bonus is I have an at sign. So if I need that for some other reason, there it is. <laughs> so next I went ahead and adhered the top portion down um, onto this. Here's where I figure out that this is not the right size. And I'm like, oh no, this sucks. I couldn't believe I did that. So I'm going to debate. Here's the debate. Okay, maybe I cut this down to six inches and it just goes in a pocket. No big deal. The problem with that is that I was already really tight on space there for fitting all of my photos and all of those labels on there. So I knew that that wasn't going to be a solution that I particularly liked. I debated adding a little bit more of that green pattern behind there. I uh, didn't really like that. Then I pulled over this wood grain. And you guys, I love the wood grain. In fact, I love the wood grain more on this spread than if this spread didn't have it. Like I'm actually glad I made a mistake <laughs> because it let me put this wood grain on there. I don't know. There's something about it that just feels really trendy and almost like you're at a brewery where they have like the wooden barrels and stuff. It just, I don't know. It just was perfect. It was meant to be is how I felt about it. So to help me place this correctly, I lined it up here on my cutting mat and originally I lined it up wrong so I have to readjust here. Like I just can't even get my sizing right here at all this week. So I relined that up, stick it down with some washi tape so that it can stay where I want it to stay and then I just stick it on there from that. Uh, that way I know that it's going to be on there straight and I also know that the sizing or the width of this page is exactly what I want it to be. I'm just going to grab a piece of some score tape, add that to the inside little piece of, 
of this page just so it's not flapping around and causing issues later. So I'm going to just stick that down, make it extra permanent here, and then we'll get to the rest of the front side of the spread. I really cannot iterate enough how happy I am with the wood grain on this page. I just think it takes it up a notch and I'm so happy with it. In case you're wondering, the wood grain paper came from the uh, Marigold collection from, from what's her name? It's not Heidi Swap from Maggie Holmes. There it is from Maggie Holmes. So on the one side, it's got like a forest scene with deer. And then on the back side, it has this awesome wood wood grain paper. I like both sides of that paper and I probably should get more of it because I'm obsessed with it. So then I went ahead and I will stick down the title piece there. I'm going to stick down all of these little sticker pieces that I made. I love the way that this comes together. I just think it's so cool. I loved being able to use a whole bunch of those icons, a whole bunch of the little stamp sets because I love it, you know, and that's why I bought it because I love it and I want to use what I buy. For this one, for the beer bottles, I'm going to stack them as though one had fallen over. So you've got the one standing up and the one fallen over. And then that gives me the top portion of this page. Then I can go ahead and take these photos and then line them up where I want them to go. I'll add some adhesive behind it and stick them down. We have six beers here. The first one is the one where... Um, we brewed an expired beer kit and it didn't taste very good, but it is there. That was our first ever beer. And then uh, we move on to the, the fancier ones. So we have an amber in the middle. The one on the end there is, I have to think about it, is an IPA, um, which is dark. It's dark for an IPA, but it was so good. It was so good. Uh, once I have those three down and exactly where I want them to go, I will add on my label stickers. And then in these label stickers is where I will place the names of those different beers. Once I actually took the label stickers off of their backing and then placed them underneath the photos, they were a perfect fit. So I actually didn't even have to trim anything off. They fit on there wonderfully. And it just, that totally made my day. So I went, uh, I had to go to my computer to figure out what this first one was called because I couldn't remember. It was the only one that they did not, uh, name themselves. So that was the Long Play IPA. It was just from, I think Mr. Beer was the company that they got it from. And then after that, they, my husband and his brother named all of the rest of them. And they, they tried to be a little bit clever with their naming and base it sometimes on like what was happening in the world around us. So we've got the isolated amber ale um, because we brewed that when we were very much isolated here. Uh, you know, a play on the whole COVID thing. Then we've got the Hold My Mask Juicy IPA. So that was like around the times so they brewed it around the time that masking up became a much bigger deal. Uh, the next one in the line where it's actually still in the bottle, it's not in the cup yet. That is one that Aaron and I brewed together. So that was our anniversary beer. And we called it the Love Potion number seven because it was our seventh year anniversary. The next one after that, they called... I think that's the stout. Yes. And the stout they called uh, All Dark Beers Matter because they brewed that during um, a lot of the summer protests. And so it was a nod to that time of the year. And then the last beer that they have there is a Scottish ale. And to play off of the idea of it being a Scottish ale and the Loch Ness Monster is in um, Scotland, they called it the Lock This Monster Up, like L-O-C-H, Lock This Monster Up, um, Scottish Ale. So they just kind of tried to be a little bit cheeky with their names and, um, you know, sometimes related it to the type of beer and then sometimes related it to what was happening in the world. So there we go. All right, you guys, that completes our spread for today. I think this one turned out really, really fun. And even though I messed up a little bit in how much I trimmed the side of this to begin with. I actually am kind of happy about it because I love the way that this wood grain looks here. It's very like brewery hipsterish. I think it's really cool. I like it. So yes, I hope that you guys have enjoyed seeing this project come together. And um, 
you know, I'm just really excited to break into these paper person kits and try to tell these stories and get this product used because I, you know, have been not super good about that with these ones. So this was an awesome opportunity to tell some stories. I hope that you feel inspired to tell some of your own. If you are working with the paper person kit this week, let me know what story you are telling with it in the comments below. Then I am going to be back uh, actually two weeks from now. Next week, I will likely have some kind of maybe vlog type video that will go up. Um, I'm not quite sure yet what that's going to be. And then the following week after that, we'll be back to the next color cast kit. So I hope that you guys are enjoying both the planning process and seeing, you know, a project or two come together. Until next time, I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week. I will be in conversation with you guys, whether it's here or in Facebook. So, you know, either place is great for keeping in contact throughout the course of the week. So I will see you guys there and, uh, and then I'll catch you guys in the next video from here. So have a great one, guys. Bye now.